Hello. Uh, before I introduce myself, there's a disclaimer that is basically what I'm about to show you isn't necessarily what you should be doing. Um, I'm Toby. I asked, I just started a new job and you had to introduce yourself and I asked my wife what I should say and that was her answer. So that's me in a nutshell apparently. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the Reflect library um, and I found, I did a search for a GIF and this seemed very apt because I some people on the internet found some code that I wrote and were like, you're a fucking idiot. What are you doing? Um, so I, I started writing this thing called underscore dot go because I'm a Rubyist in my day job and so I have the Ruby brain damage and I want everything to look like what I what I like. Um, and so I started mucking around with um, creating some very, I guess you would say, ungo structures. And um, what I was basically doing was abusing the Go reflection package, which uh, I will, oops, not be able to find. What are you doing, Macintosh? Cool. Uh, so Go reflect is basically a way you can smash loosely dynamic typing into your Go program. Um, it's actually quite nice library to use and um, basically just gives you a bunch of really nice primitives for, for uh, interacting with types um, that you determine at runtime. So uh, the, the entire structure basically works on a thing called a value. Um, so you can map sort of an arbitrary type into a value type and the value then gives you a bunch of handy methods and things that you can do. Uh, so this here, which should run, um, basically I have an int, I'm pulling a new value out of it. Um, so then I can do things, uh, I can inspect it. Uh, it has an int method which lets me pull the original thing back out. I, if you've worked with um, variant types in other languages. There's there's a bunch of, you know, this is all fairly um, standard stuff. Uh, so you can pull an int back out. Uh, you can pull just the, the raw interface type back out and, and then give that to anything that knows how to handle an interface. Uh, you've got methods for other types like this. So you go uh, value.bool and then, sorry, that's a bit small. Uh, so that now has exploded because it's saying, um, you know, we've, we've called bool on an int value. So um, things are still typed under the covers. Like there's no um, magic that's really happening here. You're just wrapping the, these types with, with something that you, you can abstract on. Uh, so, you know, the same things happens with string uh, and then boolean itself you've got, um, and then you can, you've got a boolean value that you can treat. So that's all kind of boring. Um, but what you would expect. So when it starts getting interesting is you can pull values out of a slice and so now you've got a wrapper um, around various abstract slices and now you can start doing things like iterating through this slice. Uh, one thing that you can't do is use a range selector um, or not range selector, but you can't really use a range because there's no way of that I can find of pulling uh, sort of a raw slice back out of the reflection package. So you're back down into for loops. Um, so this now is a value type on that string uh, slice. You can work out its length. You can now pull a particular, pull the value out of, um, oops. So why has that failed? Ah, I know why that's failed. So what I'm doing here is uh, iterating through this uh, value slice. Uh, I'm pulling an item out of it at that index position. That now fails because this is still a value. Like it's, it's returning a new value that's wrapping whatever was in the original slice. So that's not going to work. Uh, so then you can, what you should be able to do is uh, pull 
the string from the underlying slice out and add that to the buffer. And now I've printed Toby is awesome because it's clearly true. And um, you can work it that way. Like I showed you before, you can pull the interface type back out and then uh, that would also blow up. But now the interface can be cast in the way that you would normally cast any of the Go types. And so this is being cast to a string and it should just work. So you can, you can sort of have this level of indirection for accessing different values. Uh, then there's a bunch of interesting primitives for doing things like making a slice. So now I've got uh, i is up here. It's a slice of ints. So I'm creating a value type on those integers. Uh, it's displaying the type down here is the first thing. So that is, yeah, it's a, it's a slice of int. That's cool. Now I can make a new slice dynamically. So here I'm actually giving it uh, the type of the slice I want to create, length, capacity. You've, you've got all of the normal sort of slice operators you, you're familiar with. Um, and then you can operate that on that again. Um, so here it's just a loop through and now I've got, I'm appending into that new slice just the values that are odd, basically. So here you've got a really interesting way that you can take a slice um, that you don't know the type until runtime, dynamically create a new slice of that and then start interrogating the values off the slice and doing all sorts of interesting things. Um, the final thing that I like to show you is uh, functions. So a function is just another thing that you can reflect on. So here I'm reflecting on uh, a function that sim simply increments an int. Um, once you've got a function type, uh, it has some extra information so you can work out its in and output parameters so you can dynamically work out what a function expects to receive and cast things to the appropriate value. Um, here, I'm going to try and increment this uh, int one by one. So I'll rerun this and that has exploded because uh, this call method demands that everything gets wrapped in values again. So everything that we're doing in here is, um, you know, we're, I'm not actually calling that function directly. I'm calling the value of the function. I need to wrap all of the parameters that that function expects into values and then pass it through. Um, so you end up with code like this, which is now creating a slice of values and then calling and we see one plus one uh, does indeed equal two. And so we're wrapping, have, just have to mangle everything into these values. Uh, the very final, uh, where am I going? So one of the final interesting things is you can actually then start to create typed functions that are dynamically implemented. And so this is what I've been mucking around with with this harebrained library. So here I'm, uh, I have a, a function that actually takes an arbitrary function and the implementation of a function and basically will um, implement the function for you. And uh, each is probably the easiest one to think of. So then you can do something like define an each iterator that um, will iterate through a slice of ints and um, evaluate that. And then I'm, I've got an each implementation that's a reflection based um, implementation of an each. And um, that basically is the implementation that that typed function gets wrapped on. And so that gives you some really interesting properties. Um, so you see with each here, rather than having functions that are just sort of abusing the interface property of Go and just smashing everything into these, you know, it's, it's not typed, 
um, you can actually say, no, no, I know the types of this. I want to implement, you know, run across every um, thing in in a slice of integers and the compiler will still pick up all of your type errors and, and all of that kind of stuff and all of this under the covers is dynamically implemented. So some of the internals of Go packages are implemented with themselves with some of these techniques and uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, so there's some links, this slide I'll put on Twitter um, there's some really good articles on reflection and how to abuse them and that's it. Thank you.